Uh, well, before I get started, I just want to say um, people have asked me, is it difficult to minister in New York City? And yes, but I think it's more difficult to minister here. I mean, New York, you definitely are in touch with hell, flesh, and the, you know, everything. I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> But, you know, you're clear, it, you clearly need a Savior there, but here I'm not so sure. And so uh, it's amazing. Let's pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. <clears throat> here begins the first verse of the third chapter of the prophet Malachi. Behold, I'm going to send my messenger, and he will clear the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. And the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of the hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he's like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a smelter and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver so that they may present to the Lord offerings in righteousness. Then the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And then I will draw near to you for judgment, and I will be swift, a swift witness against the sorcerers and against the adulterers and against those who swear falsely and against those who oppress the wage of the earners and the widow and the orphan and those who turn aside the alien and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. For I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore you, O sons of Jacob, are not consumed. I once was at a dinner party with some very pious Christians. All eight of us were splitting two bottles of wine. And uh, as we were finishing our water, um, someone asked, uh, you know, if you could have anybody over for dinner, who would you have? Somebody said Shakespeare. Another person said Gandhi. And then someone said George Washington. And then finally someone said, I would just love to have one of the prophets of the Old Testament here, because they were so wonderful and just, you know, um, they were very countercultural. I'd love to hear what they had to say. And I thought to myself, as I was sipping my water, I was like, um, I was like, are you kidding? Like a prophet from the Old Testament? That's the last person you'd want at your dinner table. I mean, Isaiah, who said, I form light and create darkness. I make well-being and create calamity. I am the Lord who does these things. To Ezekiel, you'd want him at your dinner table who offers a word of woe and says it's like honey. Or obviously, you never read Jeremiah 19 who prophesied that the the nation of Israel and Judah would have to eat their children. Like these are people you don't want at your dinner table. When commenting on the great divide, the way of glory versus the way of the cross, Gerhard Forde writes, without the theology of the cross, we misuse the best in the worst manner. This is especially true when we get our hands on the prophets. All sorts of erroneous teachings emerge and arise out of the prophets, from tithing to ushering in the kingdom of God's justice and his reign of you know, humility and goodness. And when we get it here, we'll finally invite him to join us. And, uh, this is, and no matter how passionate or politically relevant the sermons may be, when the sinner is at the heart of the prophetic message, as opposed to Christ and him crucified, Well, we misuse the best in the worst manner. We neuter the word of God. For as Forte writes, no repairs, no improvements, no optimistic encouragements are possible. Israel, Judah, the world, you and I need to be born again. The prophet Malachi was actually, which actually means messenger, ministered in Judah roughly a hundred years after the Jews had returned home from their Babylonian captivity. The second temple was in place. However, none of the glorious promises that Israel had hoped for had begun to come into fruition. And so what happened was that Judah had developed a veneer of piety, an appearance of devotion, when in reality there was a real presence of detachment and lassitude. There was an attitude that they were basically good people, and the problem was those folks over there, instead of seeing and understanding themselves as equal offenders. Luther's first thesis in the Heidelberg Disputation is this. The law of God is the most salutary doctrine of life, and it cannot advance humans on their way to righteousness, but rather hinders them. The people of Judah, because of their piety, not a lack thereof, 
had made things worse. As Forde says, he says, <clears throat> commenting on this thesis, it is commonplace among evangelical Christians to believe that we can't perfectly fulfill the law, but we often try to because we assume if we could, we would. To quote St. Benjamin Franklin perfectly, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> when in actuality, this idea actually makes the problem worst. The biggest delusion in humanity is that we are basically good and that other people out there are the problem. That other conference over there is the problem that took my hotel room, you know? <laughs> and when we think we're good, like the addict, we crave more good. And then we dare to ask the question, where is the God of justice? Why isn't God fixing it? Now, this may also be your first step to becoming a theologian, but that's for another devotion. But this is my first point. God fixing it, especially those people over there, is a call out for his judgment. And it is a supreme human delusion to complain about the darkness in the world without first confessing the darkness that lies in our own heart. Chapter 3 of Malachi illustrates how God is going to actually fix it how he's going to take care of the darkness from within and not just make things better, because that's the last thing we also need, but how he's going to actually make things new. And it begins with Malachi prophesying with God sending a messenger. The New Testament clearly identifies this messenger as John the Baptist. And if you recall, this was one of John the Baptist's calling to reveal and to expose that which is up and bring it down, and then that which is down to bring it to repentance, and to the Lamb of God that was slain. And that, Malachi identifies, is the messenger of the covenant whom God delights. And indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. And indeed, we know and confess he has come in the personal work of Jesus. However, Malachi identifies Jesus' coming as something terrifying. He says in verse 2, For he's like a refiner's fire, and a fuller soap. And both of these images illustrate judgment. However, for the sake of time, I want to focus on the latter because it is an illustration of not only warning and threat, but more importantly, hope. The identi the ident that identifier, refiner, makes all the difference. You see, something like a forest fire destroys indiscriminately. I remember back in 2014, the last time I was in San Diego, my parents had a home up in Carlsbad um, where some of the worst destruction of a forest fire earlier that year had happened. And the aftermath, if you've ever seen a forest fire, is bizarre. Two hills will be burnt and one will be perfectly fine. You know, two houses are destroyed while another one has come like, there because the fire completely leaped over it. A forest fire is, is destructive and it's indiscriminate. However, a refiner's fire, while it is uh, destructive, it's not indiscriminate, is it? It purifies. It separates out impurities. It makes silver and gold more valuable. And this is my second point. Malachi prophesies how God will, dis will fix it by describing Jesus coming as a refiner's fire. And this is both a warning because nothing impure will stand in the presence of God. Yet it is also a word of hope because it tells us that God's judgment is not indiscriminate. Rather, his judgment instead has purpose and intention. So here comes the million-dollar question, which drives us to the gospel. If nothing impure will stand in his presence, what hope is there for any of us? The good news of the gospel is that the refiner's fire did come. It was intentional and with purpose. But thanks be to God, it didn't fall on any of us. Malachi prophesies in verse 5 of our reading, Then I will come near to you in judgment, and I will be swift to bear witness against the sorcerers, adulterers, liars, oppressors, those who thrust aside the alien, and most importantly, those who do not respect me. The refiner's fire came near with Jesus the messenger of the new covenant. 
And by bearing the burden of that witness, being consumed by the judgment of the cross in our place, absorbing our impurity so that nothing will stand in our life either but Christ and him crucified. As Paul writes, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And God works in that strange way in order to demonstrate that he, the Lord, does not change. To demonstrate that he, the Lord, has always been a God of grace. That he, the Lord, has always been a God of mercy. And that he, the Lord, will be a God who will always stand with you and go before you and make all things new as he kills and makes alive with his word. So that in Christ's death and resurrection, we too will walk out of the grave, a triumphant priesthood, purer than gold and silver, resting in the only offering that is pleasing to the Lord, Jesus Christ the righteous, for you, for me, and for the whole world. And this is my third point. Who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? You will, but not by your might, not by your piety, or pointing to the darkness out there, or who you're inviting to your dinner table, but because of the forgiveness of your sins, found in the Lord who does not change, Jesus Christ, crucified, risen, and coming again for you. Amen.